1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 onwards, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Christ is the first one who woke up from the, from the death. You realize what it means. And interestingly, the Bible calls it asleep. Believers in Christ, the body is gone to asleep, but the spirit has gone to heaven with the heavenly father instantly. Verse 21, for as by a man came death, by a man also come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Verse 23, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Is it Christ the first fruits? Christ goes first, we follow him. Verse 24, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God, of kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he put all his enemies under his feet. The journey for redemption, for saving mankind, all the elect in the world, and bring them back to God the Father is reestablish the kingdom of God depending on Jesus destroying every rule, authority, and power. Three words. Rule, authority, and power. And then it said, and for Christ must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. So you see the journey for fullness of redemption, for fullness of redemption, for the kingdom of God, the restoration, the establishing the kingdom of God is warfare, is destruction, and everything to be destroyed. The, the word destroy appears twice. Okay. Um, and then and then the word all his enemies under his feet. So the enemies appear twice. Destroy appeared twice. And, and uh death literally appeared, um, you know, twice as well. So you can see the kingdom of God is, is, is the kingdom of God established, uh, is the kingdom of God established by Christ consists of, of destroying all his enemies. Okay. The last enemy is death. Okay. So I just want to say that, you know, the kingdom of God is not so easily established by Christ. It's not. In fact, he struggled a lot. He struggled. He cried to God the Father. We love Christ in tears. He read the book of Hebrews, for example. I said, and then you know, so Christ is the first fruit. He rose from the dead. Um, then comes the end. Okay, he, when he delivers the kingdom of God uh, to God the Father after destroying every rule, every authority, and every power. Now this is really interesting. Verse. 24. Okay, let's look at um, any study Bible is if, if they have anything that they want to talk about. Let's see. Okay. All right. Verse 1 Corinthians 15, 24. That's a verse, right? Let's see. The events at the, this NIV study Bible corresponds, the events at the end of history argue for a bodily resurrection. Bodily resurrection. Christ was raised from the dead first, and his followers would be raised from the dead when he returns. Okay, I said that before, right? <clears throat> when you die, your soul goes to heaven immediately with God the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, just like the thief on the on the cross, the middle, the middle thief, uh, the, the the one on the right. Okay, and then Christ was raised first bodily. And then his followers, which is us, will be raised from the dead when he returns. That is bodily. Our body probably rotten, definitely rotten, okay? Thousands of years, hundreds of years, whatever the case may be, by the time Christ returns. So we'll be given a new celestial body, okay? Christ's return brings the end of the present world as he finally eliminates all powers that oppose God. That's a key thing. Christ must eliminate. You hear that? Christ must destroy all powers that oppose God. You think about that, that. How many things in the world today oppose God? Think about that. There's so many things. The powers, rules, the social, the, uh, what do you call, the worldliness, godlessness. If you look at it, it's just on the increase. Satan himself, the devil, 
the old serpent, Satan, is going to be thrown into hellfire. But right now, he's not yet thrown there. He is super active. You know, so there is a destruction. There's a, dis there's a huge warfare going on. You know, if you don't call this warfare, I don't know what is warfare. If you think that Christianity is just gentleness, meekness, and mildness, as a lot of people, certain sectors of the church would like to portray that and, and talk about love, coziness. You know, you just really need both. You need, you need love, coziness, and love, and, and kindness, and uh, forgiveness, and, and, um, and all sort of the other things. But you also need to talk about warfare. I mean, not that I love what it seems, but I, I do. What I read, the passage that I read now is very strong on warfare because Jesus eliminates, it destroys every power. I said in the last Sunday's preaching that, you know, a lot of people think that Christianity is grace, grace. It is grace. By grace, we're saved. By grace, uh, by the grace, by grace, by faith in Christ alone, we are saved. Correct? That is correct. Nothing we've done. Totally Christ. But what Christ has done is not by grace. What Christ has done is by law. And he, he had to fight the battle. He eliminates all powers. He destroys all power. How? By his death. That's right. By his death and his resurrection. Slowly, he just destroyed them. He's already defeated the devil. He's already uh, defeated Satan and, and uh, defeated death. But not eliminated them yet. They are still hanging around. Okay, so Jesus' present rule lasts until he has subjected all enemies to God's rule. So the goal is that Jesus has to, to subject all the enemies of God to God's rule. Okay, you can name them. You know, there's a lot of ism out there. Godlessness, self-centeredness, because postmodernism, I am the rule. I don't care. Uh, atheism, you know, everything. Uh, uh, sexuality and everything that that and the and all the religions they are not in line with Christ and all this. Okay, finally, then death, the believer's last enemy, will be destroyed. Will be destroyed, and Christ's victory will result in God's victory, and, and the kingdom and the Christ reign is Christ's rule over history as mediator, sustainer of creation, over the church of His body. All right. Um, Jesus said the kingdom of God had dawned in and through his ministry, etc. So let's look at ESV study Bible a minute. All right. Um, okay. On the reign of Christ and subjection of all things under his feet. All right. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. When believers are finally resurrected from the dead, the destruction of death will be complete. All right. He did. They didn't talk much about it. So. I guess this is uh, what I just want to say, that it is a lot of struggle and fight and uh, spiritual warfare for Jesus. He has done it. Now it's coming to us. We have to finish it in Christ Jesus so that we can bring all things to be subjected to Christ. All things, you know, that's, that's a huge, that's why we need to do church planting. That's why we need to do evangelism. Yep, you need to spread the word of God. Um, a lot of things to be done. Amen.